now, Stephen A., you had something more to say about DeMora Smith. We were talking about Adrian Peterson and the topic of guaranteed contracts in the NFL. First of all, this is not something to question his competency or his leadership, um, it, it really, because I know that, he's, that, that he is competent. I actually like DeMora Smith, but I think, Ryan, it's important to point out this, and I've said this many times on the show in the past, Skip, there's a difference between labor relations and labor negotiations. Mm -hmm. And labor negotiations sometimes is interfered with labor relations or vice versa. Take Adrian Peterson into consideration. You don't agree to show up and talk with the commissioner, um, you know, or, or whatever that that case materialized into everything seems to be about lawyers and legalese when sometimes all that's required is two individuals going out to dinner or lunch sitting down and hashing things out over a drink or over some food and just hash that's labor relations but the NFLPA does not have that because DeMora Smith hasn't made sure to have that with Roger Goodell and as a result I believe it has gotten in the way and has made mounted out of molehills. I can, on I can too many say occasions. I can say this. I, I've been in enough meetings. I, I've been uh, around long enough in the NFL PA to know that the the fault doesn't just lie with the NFL PA. That was well, that, that. you know that's been both ways well, about the relations. So you know. Okay, so let's stay in the NFL. Ryan Clark is going to stay with us and go from one running back to another, talking about Ray Rice. So here's what executive director of the NFL, PA, Demory Smith, had to say about Ray Rice. Ray Rice, is he being blackballed? Why isn't he getting a second chance? This, unfortunately, is a league that has a history of, of uh, blackballing players. I find it hard to believe that uh, a player of Mr. Rice's caliber um, hasn't at least got one offer from a league to come, I'm sorry, from a team to, uh, to come work out. So that was Smith telling our very own Sal Palantonio that Ray Rice is being blackballed. I'm really interested to hear what you have to say about this, Ryan. You know, this is a, a very interesting topic. This is something that can be taken, taken so many ways. When D. Smith says there's been players blackballed, we have a whole list of guys who fought for free agency, of guys who were big union reps, who were never able to play again, who were cut from teams and never picked up. But I think this situation is different, but it does go to more collusion, where we've had many collusion suits against the NFL, whether it was during the free uh, the uh, non-salary cap year, where we felt like they colluded to keep prices down on certain guys. And so there's been things that, that's going this way. So for me, it's almost sketchy to say, okay, he's being blackballed, or these guys have gotten together and said, okay, we're not going to pick up Ray Rice, but I know he's become the face of domestic violence in the NFL. Even with all the other people who were involved, whether it be Ray McDonald, whether it's, it's Greg Hardy, all of these other people who were during, the, during this time were also facing these same things. When the video comes out, when you see the tapes, Ray Rice became the face of domestic violence in the NFL. And we had to make a point as a league, not just the, the union, as a league, that we weren't going to stand for this. So I feel like in some way, teams are scared to touch him teams feel like there will be backlash if we go out and grab Ray Rice. I was watching the show one day and uh, Herm was saying that Dallas would be a great place for him. Yeah. It's, it's hard for Dallas to go out and get him when you already have Greg Hardy. And you also made a great point. He's not coming off that year where he was probably the best running back in the league, leading the league uh, with th over 1,300 yards rushing, yep. a ton of catches, making big plays. He's coming off of a year where he was probably an average running back. Now, what I do know, yards of carry. I do know I've spoken to Ray many times since the situation happened. He's as apologetic, as remorseful, and as changed as I've ever seen a guy who's gone through such an ordeal in such a short period of time. You know, we've had guys rehabilitate like Brandon Marshall, who's become the face of, of, mental, of mental health, of, of, of getting the word out that, you know, these things do affect people. So we've seen people go the right route as we have seen people go back to doing those same things. So for me, I don't know if it's a situation of people blackballing him, but I think it is a situation that people are scared to touch him because amongst all the guys who were involved in domestic violence, Ray Rice has seemed to be the poster boy for it. For it.
Right. So maybe it's not the right term, blackball. Just everybody's keeping well, I think, you know, I think, I think the blackball came from the question. When yeah. Sal Powell yeah. asked the question, yeah. he said about Ray being blackball. So it kind of leads you to use those words in your answer. But I do think it's a situation where teams are staying away from him. Mm -hmm. Stephen A. Yeah, Skip, I want you to go first because I'm going to go in. But I'm, I want you, you to go first. Get it off your chest. <laughs> oh, yes. Go ahead. In, in no way am I trying to defend anything that Ray Rice did. But in the big picture, I feel sorry for him only because that video is going to haunt him forever. And what, what galls me about this, he has become the face of domestic violence for a league that ignored domestic violence for years and years. And all of a sudden it's like, well, we finally found our guy and now he's the face because we got the video here and he is paying the price for their failings for years and years and years of sweeping domestic violence under the carpet. And, and I'm not saying he doesn't deserve not to be in the league, but, but we all agree at some point you deserve a second chance. Now maybe at age 28, maybe he's just not worth a second chance to most teams and I get that. But, but again, I'm not, I'm not saying I feel sorry for him, but I feel sorry for the situation where it's because of the league's failings that suddenly he's too hot to handle, probably permanently. Go ahead, okay. Stephen A. <clears throat> Getting back to what Ryan Clark had to say. <clears throat> Ryan, we're all, first of all, let me say this to answer this question directly. Demora Smith is absolutely right. I believe Ray Rice is being blackballed. I also agree with you, Ryan. I'll take your word for it in terms of his contrition and his changed ways. But I've always been of the mindset that this is the land of second chances. Ray Rice deserves a second chance. Ray Rice deserves an opportunity to be back in the NFL. So we agree there. Where all of these guys lose me, Ryan, tell me what part about what DeMora Smith said that they didn't know. See, this is the kind of stuff that we don't talk about enough, Ryan, amongst ourselves. Because when you talk about the system, and you talk about how the system conducts itself. There is nothing, absolutely nothing about it that is surprising. We got a video of you, Ray Rice, hitting a woman. As a result, you know Madison Avenue and all the advertisers and sponsors that the NFL does business with, they'd have a conniption if you were brought back. It's entirely plausible that the NFL, without even getting into the black ball situation as you are so accurately articulated, Ryan, it's entirely possible that you're just nuclear, Ray Rice, and they're scared to touch you because it's bad for business. That's entirely different than being black ball. See, black ball is when it don't matter whether it's good for business or not. They just, they, uh, they will collude, they will do whatever they have to do to keep you out of the league. But when something's bad for business, that's not being blackballed. That's bad for business. If that's the case, there isn't a soul alive in America that wouldn't be blackballed under certain situations. So we know this. And since we know this, Ray Rice, wouldn't it behoove you to extend an apology to Mr. Bashadi, the owner for the Baltimore Ravens? I mean, because after all, what he did was under the table, clandestinely, privately, try to assure you, I'm going to find a way to take care of you, to look out for you. And because you were so hell bent on making sure that everybody knew you were honest and forthcoming to the Ravens and to the National Football League, you dimed out the one billionaire that was willing to help you. And you're wondering why you don't have a job? Could that possibly play a role in it? That the other billionaires who own NFL teams are looking at you and this little club, Ryan, that you know a hell of a lot better than me. This little club is sitting there going, oh, so you dimed him out when he was the one guy trying to help you. Why shouldn't we help you? Well, it's bad enough that you got the domestic violence issue in the video to go with it. But then on top of it all, you dimed out the one dude in our clique that was trying to look out for you? Not smart. And that's the kind of stuff that we need to talk about. You got to be about the marathon instead of the sprint. You got to look ahead. I'll take it on a far more innocuous level. Ryan Clark, you were playing in the NFL before you started working with ESPN. 
You were still doing work for us while you were on the NFL roster. Why? Because you saw the forest from the trees and you saw what you wanted to do when your playing career was over. You didn't think about tomorrow. You thought about next month, next year, the year after, and the year after, and the year after that. These brothers think in the moment and then get upset when the world to follow comes crashing down on them and telling you there is no tomorrow because you didn't use your head. That's the problem with these guys. And that's what needs to be said. That ain't being blackballed. Well, it sounds like all three of you are in agreement that he deserves a second chance. Whether or not he will get that second chance remains to be seen, even though Ray McDonald, Greg Hardy, both have gotten their second chances. Last question before we let you go. If you were a head coach in the NFL, would you give him a second chance? I would. Rice? I would. But the thing is, head coaches don't always make those, those decisions. All right. It's about the business. I would bring him back to the Ravens. I would bring him back. If he apologized to me if I was Bashadi, I'd bring him back tomorrow. They will support him. All right. NFL analyst Ryan Clark, thank you for joining us. We're going to go back to Thanks, the bro. association. Yes, and even though we're going to look at where game one of the NBA Finals is until Thursday, we're going to look back. What happened to James Harden? We'll talk about that.